So we don't know for sure when any of the Gospels are written. None of them claim uh, or tell us who the author was. We have the names Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but those obviously don't appear in any of the Gospels. Those were assigned uh, later by the church. Um, So we don't know for sure, but generally scholarly consensus would say that Mark is the earliest of the Gospels. It's the one, and there's a lot of reasons for this, but very quickly overview here. Uh, Mark is the most tangible story of this happened, then this happened, then this happened. So we tend to think Mark was the earliest, possibly written in the 50s, uh, somewhere around the time that Paul is writing. Paul's writing in the 50s and the 60s. Mark is probably in that period. Matthew and Luke are a little later. Uh, Part of the reason we tend to think that is because in those two Gospels, uh, first of all, they're borrowing content from Mark. So they're copying stories from Mark and they're including it in their Gospels. So we know what comes after that. But also, in those two Gospels, the real sort of... um, We actually talked about this last week or two weeks ago with the Pharisees. The contrast is being made between Jesus and the Pharisees. Really quickly here, that's because in 70 AD, the temple is destroyed. The Sadducees, who controlled temple worship, are kind of irrelevant. And so by Matthew and Mark in the 70s and 80s, the most important stories are Jesus interacting with the Pharisees. John, we think, is probably late first century in the 80s, 90s. Some scholars would even put it in the early 100s. And part of the reason for that is John has the most developed theology around Jesus. So it's not just what Jesus did and what happened. It's a lot of exposition, and it's a lot of riffing on the meaning and the importance of Jesus. And generally, we tend to think that is from the generation after Jesus reflecting on the story of Jesus and assigning value and theology to that which is one of the major reasons that we think John is later. So again, we're speculating, but that is generally the scholarly consensus. Anything you want to add to that one? I just think the experience with these texts for our lives is really kind of fun and lively. So it's, it, when you start reading the Bible for yourself, you're flipping through and you think, ah, same story, same story, same story. Oh, it's a different title, same story. And then you start pulling back these layers. And one of the things that's so interesting about John is people call it this, um, like the gospel of all this symbolism. Mm -hmm. And you start seeing the story being very similar, or in fact, John, including a bunch of stories that aren't in the other gospels. And that these emphases are like, they're subtle and cool and speaking to another time and another place. And that is a really, really fun way that the Gospels continue to open up for us. So when you run into some information, you thought, that's not what I thought. That is different from what I always believed. I'd say, like, keep going toward that thing because it actually makes the text, in my experience, feel more and more and more alive. Uh, It it doesn't have to feel like a threat. It can feel like an invitation. One more, maybe? Got one up here. Let's take that one. I'm Katie. Um, Mine is more of a comment. So I like the connection you made between relationship and religion because Mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of my journey has been the relationship and I've always felt that connection. And then just like this last year, I'd say I've been doing more of the practices and the Mm really like praying over a meal and just reading the Bible and all these different practices Mm -hmm. that are now routines in my life rather than just the connection. So I thought that was cool to... Yeah, it's a beautiful interplay, right? And I get why people default to, okay, we've got to get rid of the religion, we've got to go to the relationship. Because if it's just the religion, it's just the practices, that can feel very dry and dusty. But when you have that connection with God, and then you layer on these practices, those practices have this ability to kind of hold you there when your emotions do fluctuate and stuff. And I think it's that interplay that's been really important to me. So I love that. I love that you're moving from that connection, that beauty, and that that love relationship with God into, okay, now I'm going to reinforce that, and I'm going to build some structure around that with practice. Love it. Want to make a quick comment, then we'll take this text question we have to take. So, All right, let's see. Somebody just wanted a little bit more context on Slam (laughs) Duncan. That's a good question. Uh, I tried to play uh, basketball on the team in junior high. They called me Slam Duncan because I was terrible, and... uh, it didn't make the team, so the name didn't stick, so it left off of that. So I do have a friend, after the sermon this morning, he's like, what do you mean you don't have a nickname? I've called you Jer Bear for years. And I was like, we're not letting that one go out of this conversation, and now I've told all you guys, so there we go. 